वेलकम टू अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ नोवास पॉडकास्ट आज हमारे साथ मौजूद है एक बहुत स्पेशल गेस्ट जो कि ना सिर्फ असिस्टेंट कमिश्नर है बट हैज अ डायनामिक प्रेजेंस ऑन सोशल मीडिया एज वेल कनेक्टिंग विद पीपल इन इनोवेटिव वेज सो लेट्स वेलकम हिम अस्सलाम वालेकुम वालेकुम सलाम थैंक यू सो मच फॉर बीइंग हियर टुडे इट्स अ प्लेजर मैम उसामा बियॉन्ड द बैज बियॉन्ड द ऑफिस हु इज उसामा एज अ पर्सन वी वुड लाइक टू नो अ लिटिल अबाउट योर बैकग्राउंड um i think everyone knows ki i am from quetta uh, mm-hmm. i am from balochistan to mera hamesha se pahado se bada taluk raha hai i am a very into sports and the gym anyone jo ki mujhe follow karte they know i love the gym uh, it's a part of my routine and besides that uh, before this uh, a lot of people know but i was a freelancer a video videographer oh, okay a video editor which is a graphic designer which explains how i can incorporate both my profession and then this together so i still love creating still love trying out new things uh, still uh, you know have you know play football go to the gym all of that so i think besides my own service i love doing all of these things which help me maintain a good mental you know level of satisfaction and offers a good distraction as well from this busy life all right that's nice okay so you are an assistant commissioner by profession mashallah and you're posted in islamabad yes so us pe bhi hum baat karenge but let's before that let's get to know you a little on personal level okay koi aisi hobby koi aisa interest that when audience know about them they'd be surprised um आई डोंट थिंक कोई इस तरह का इंटरेस्ट है जिसको देख के लोग बहुत ज़्यादा शौक होंगे आई यू नो आई थिंक द जिम इज़ अ नॉर्मल इंटरेस्ट एंड देन रीडिंग इज़ अ नॉर्मल इंटरेस्ट नो वन वुड बी शॉक बाई दैट आई आई लव गेमिंग मैं आई के नॉट प्ले बिकॉज ऑफ यू नो वर्क वर्क लाइफ बैलेंस जो है ना आउट ऑफ बैलेंस हो गया लेकिन आई लव टू प्ले पी एस फोर और पी एस फाइव एंड बिफोर आई स्टार्ट प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर सी एस एस इट वॉज वन ऑफ माई मेन हॉबीज तो आई लव प्लेइंग फीफा और गेम्स लाइक रेमबो सिक्स मुझे बड़ा अच्छा लगता था खेलना और अब टाइम नहीं मिलता लेकिन इट्स अ फन हॉबी ओके ओके सो स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम योर हाई स्कूल हाउ लाइक सार ऑफ you end up doing what you are doing today to so basically you know my my dad was in the civil service to jin log ke ammi abbu hote hain na it's you know like a prodigal son you have to go down that line because it's in the family and then jin log ke you know parents hote hain service mein ek na ek dafa to aapne css dena hi hota hai warna you are a, an automatic disappointment oh, so yeah. i think I, my father was always the main inspiration i always knew ke maine css karna hai oh yeah and then after you know high school university i came over to islamabad i did my university from here and then i did uh, you know my css so it was always i think written in stone ke i have to give one attempt and then i guess i'd say I'll, i was lucky enough or you know it was a good attempt that got me through the line okay okay so you have mentioned civil services so would you like to tell ki civil services hai kya and as an assistant commissioner what is your job description so as in uh, let's first discuss what the yeah. civil service is yes. it's very broad mm-hmm. uh, civil service is not just you know these 12 groups of css it also includes the provincial services uh, services like the forestry department you know environmental okay. protection department and even i think the civil service includes uh, paradigms like even a, a doctor uh, who's serving in a government hospital he's also in the civil service because he okay. is you know uh by mm-hmm. the my, uh, being paid by the government to mm-hmm. serve the people so i think uh, you know civil service is a very broad term and people try to narrow it down to css i think it's much more broader than that some people also to see uh, civil service by not being in the civil service like they're running their own ngos that's also a kind of a civil service you know what the edi foundation does or anyone yeah. else they're doing it for the public now coming over to my role as an assistant commissioner uh, in fbr the main role has to be you know it's you know if i could break it down in two things it's mm-hmm. like firstly collecting taxes from people who pay taxes and then trying to uh, get more people into the tax net 
and then if you you know open it up it can be more broad uh, doing audit of companies of individuals whether what they've declared is true or not making sure that people pay their return on times uh, making sure that you know companies are abiding by the law no one okay. is trying to do tax evasion or tax fraud and then also like i said ki trying to expand the tax base which is right now a huge focus of the country of the imf to so trying to get more people into the tax net and uh, trying to implement tax laws that's you know basically the job of an assistant commissioner uh, at fbr all right okay the concept that you explain about civil services that is actually very new for me could be like i haven't look at the civil services from this perspective yeah so that was very new for me acha usama kafi time se sawal mere mind mein pop up kar raha hai Okay, because I have been, I have gone through your social media accounts as well, or इस तरह से दूसरे लोगों के भी like political leaders, politicians हो गए दूसरे accounts. जो चीज मैंने notice किया particularly when it comes to civil servants, they would be like के particularly the civil servants जो कि ज़्यादा active होते हैं on social media के like they would be posting pictures every time, videos देते रहते हैं, तो कि काम कब करते हैं. So like personally, I think. Okay, it's a good thing. It's it's a great thing because you know, sort of, you are appointed for the people. Hmm. So this is how you like stay connected with the people, and this is how you bridge that gap between an officer and for the people uh, for whom he is appointed. So personally, I think it's a huge. It, it's a it's it's a great way. But what's your take on this? How, what would be your comments on these? My take is the same. Otherwise, hmm. I would not be using a social media hmm. platform. I think. Uh, a lot of people don't like civil servants using so- social media mm-hmm. and their reasoning is that we don't belong there even th- th- they'll just be saying this to uh, i think mainly civil servants uh, who have come through css or pms yeah so like i said a doctor can also be a civil a servant civil is servant, a civil yes. servant mm-hmm. right uh but he would not be scrutinized if he's posting his pictures or videos on work yes but we would be we are more under the microscope or you know people are viewing us very closely i think it's the social media is a great way for us to connect with people and you know if we are sharing pictures or videos it means that we're doing our jobs yeah. more effectively mm-hmm. trying to show people that we're doing our jobs otherwise i don't think that anyone would know we're doing our jobs absolutely uh, unless mm. you know th- there are other factors like it can be result oriented maybe people see that the tax base is growing they'll be like they're doing their jobs but i think i found social media much more helpful because it helps me you know a lot of customers uh, not customers but tax payers you know when yeah. they want to complain about something social media is the easiest way to access us and yeah. i think you have seen a lot of examples yes, that yes. people use twitter mm, to complain that. about things and those mm-hmm. issues get resolved so i think uh, you know i think social uh, civil servants get a lot of bash on u- using social media and uh, it is i think a little bit needless yes because uh, this is the same way i think because we are living in a digital world and the social media is playing a huge role in like yes. accessing people and approaching uh, especially the officers so yes uh, i also think that staying connected to people is a great way through social media All right, Osama. When we when it comes to journey, कोई भी journey हो, आपकी CSS की journey है. We can talk about any journey. So it brings challenges with itself. Right. So you are posted. You recently posted. So so far, कोई ऐसा challenge that you would like to talk about, and how did you manage it? How did you cope with the challenge? With well, with regards to service, you know, and unfortunately, we cannot reveal a lot of things. But I think. Uh, it's generally understood that the government right now is mm-hmm. a lot under resourced so you would be facing a lot of challenges when you try to come into the service and you want to make change a lot of the uh, you know new people who join the service they do want to make a change but what they'll find is that a lot of departments are under resourced because of the financial uh, financial situation of the country So I think the biggest challenge right now is trying to achieve the targets that are given to you using these limited resources and then the true measure of you as a person is how you divide those resources mm-hmm. in order to get an effective you know meaningful output out of them. 
I think the first thing that I've realized right now is, you know, it's very simple if I tell you that go and broaden the tax base. Mm-hmm. But it's a lot more complicated if you go and then you realize, ke, oh, um, maybe I don't have enough staff or maybe there's not enough monetary budget to do that and other such examples. So I think this is uh, the biggest challenge. They're not just me, but a lot of other civil servants are facing right now. Uh, and people think that, you know, we have lots of facilities by yeah. the government. That I, I think that's a misconception. All right. You think that's a misconception? Huh, I think, uh, you know, if, if someone gets a car, if uh, uh-huh. you know, if someone gets um, even a house to stay, I think uh, you'll realize that because these uh, salaries are very less, um, maybe even less than $400, right? Oh, yeah. So you need these things to survive. And I don't think those cars are very much, um, you know, luxury cars. Uh, you know, they're there for you to work. But so when you need to go and then, for example, again, broaden the tax base, you need people or you need, uh, you know, resources to enforce this because no one wants to pay taxes. Do you want to pay taxes? I don't think anyone <laughs> wants to pay taxes. And then uh, you have to, you know, kind of force the situation sometimes. So and then you need a lot of resources for that. And then you cannot use your yeah. personal resources, for example, for this. So I think, uh, you know, the biggest challenge any civil servant is right now facing or has faced is the, you know, um, it could be the lack of resources or mm-hmm. in any one individual situation facing a dilemma whether, you know, uh, there there is a dilemma sometimes that you want to serve the people and then your seniors are telling you something else. Mm. That moment has not happened to me yet, so I'm good. But other people have faced that situation as well. All right. Uh, so, Sama, like, uh, as everybody knows, you have a very prominent presence on social media. So being a public figure and then maintaining the authority that is associated with your position. So how, like, kind of how do you navigate that balance? How do you strike a balance between these two different worlds? I think it's very easy because the whole point of my social media is to give people a more you know clear Mm -hmm. perception or a clear image about what css is and bring so i've Mm -hmm. never been you know one to say that this is it this is the dream this is everything i've also pointed out the flaws in the system i've said before you right now that salaries are not very competitive Mm -hmm. yeah i try to give people a holistic picture but uh, you know the thing that people focus most on are the good parts. The good parts, the, the yeah. People, absolutely. you know, it's uh, fantasized a lot. Mm. Uh, CSS in the country, I think, rightly so. Who doesn't love serving their nation, their people? Mm-hmm. And then there's a good job security in it. I try to give them a more holistic picture. And what I realize is that throughout this process, I'm just being myself. This is uh, me in real life as well, uh, and this is me during my job as well. So whatever is happening, I try to give people a real picture that if you do CSS, these are the things you're going to get. These are things you're going to miss. And uh, I think that has helped me maintain a good balance and also developed a good connection with, you know, my followers. Oh, yeah. And I would say that we need officers like you in our country. Not many agree. (laughs) I would agree. And I would say that. All right, Osama, uh, tell me that so there are a lot of CSS aspirants who aspire to join civil services of Pakistan. So which three groups, we can skip IRS for <laughs> right now. So which three groups would you suggest for a civil servant? Because I think, because I don't have enough knowledge on that. I think there is some kind of a form they have to fill mm. before the interview and True. they have to correct me if I'm wrong yeah and right. then there are preferences they have to give their preferences so which three groups would you prefer and why uh, because of my personal affiliation with the police I have always loved it um, mm-hmm. but I would not place it at the top because you know when when you get towards the end of your career uh, the ad Pakistan administrative service it really is uh, a good service because it has horizontal mobility yeah. And then more chances of going into grade 22, um, you know, more, uh, uh, you know, power to change things, to make things happen when you're at a latter stages of your life. So I think 
Naturally, I would place Pakistan administrative services at first. Okay. And then the police service of Pakistan. I, I Personally, I would place it at first. But for most, generally for most people, mm-hmm. I'd say they should put it at second. Uh, and then females, a lot of females do hesitate when they're picking the police service because it is a very hectic service. And then there's a lot of physicality involved uh, when you, you know, you're uh, trying to uh, maintain a household when you're trying to get settled or even raising kids and then joining oh, the police yeah. service can be a great challenge but more and more females are doing it now so I don't think it's a problem I would say you can place it at second okay the you know respect you get in the police service it's uh, you know the best of the 12 groups uh, yeah. without police a shadow services. of doubt yes okay. that uniform uh, demands respect so I'd place it at second and then the third is very difficult because there's a lot uh, you know of good groups i i would say i'd pick the pakistan custom service uh, at the third place again a uniform service a very good and balanced service mm-hmm. uh, the work uh, life you know balance is good in the custom service okay and you know again because of the uniform you get a lot of respect mm-hmm. you get to make a lot of change and i think it's better than the foreign service because I think the foreign service recently has, um, because of the you know uh, fiscal situation in the country, it has you know maybe downgraded a bit. I, I hope no one is offended by that. Mm-hmm. It is down to personal choices, but these are my top three. All right. So you said like uh, Pakistan administrative service on the top, then police services of Pakistan, and uh, on the third, custom yes. services, right? Yes. All right. Okay. Uh, there is another question in my mind. Yeah, a uh, few days back, I was going to my Twitter and a tweet made me stop there. It was, it said that, do civil servants really serve? With a big question mark. Big question mark. Yeah. So what would you say on this? Uh, I don't think we do. <laughs> nee, that's a joke. Um, I think we do serve. Uh, there's a lot of uh, common misperception mm-hmm. that CSS officers are not serving the country. I think people fail to realize that CSS officers constitute only 1% of all government officers in the country. So, you know, these are the officers that are the most trained. Uh, in some cases, you know, we are spending 1.5 to 2 years of training. And then all of that, I think uh, the reason why people have so less faith in the civil service or they're doubtful mm-hmm. is because of the, you know, lower staff uh, because they're not that well trained or that well paid. And a okay. lot of the things that are happening, mm-hmm. if you are an officer, are happening behind your back. Mm-hmm. You are unaware of them, right? So you, you know, it's, uh, normally you cannot, um, I think, micromanage every situation. But in some cases, in some offices, you know, even to reach an assistant commissioner, people are having to pay the lower staff, Yeah, which is an unfortunate thing. Uh, and this is not you know, done by us, obviously. It's mm-hmm. happening behind our backs. It happens everywhere. So I'd say if, again, the country had the resources, mm-hmm. they would really want to train the, you know, lower staff, especially 16 and below. Mm-hmm. These guys usually only get like a month or two of trainings, right? So all there's right. a big gap between right, what right. the mm. upper officers mm. are being trained and then the lower staff. And if they could, you know, fill that vacuum by maybe providing them with more trainings mm-hmm. or more, uh, I think, fiscal support, I think that would restore the faith of the people in the civil service. But I think everyone is trying to serve the country. You see them out there they're trying to make a change with limited resources. Yeah, I agree totally. And here comes another prospect of social media <laughs> where people can access you yes. directly yes. through your Instagram and Facebook and you know other social media platforms. All right, uh, I would uh, like to ask a question. Okay. What is the scene of retirement in civil services? Because if we talk about normal jobs, ki baat kere, so like at the age of 30, retirement mm. uh, is So wh- what's the scene in civil services? It's the same or is it different? At the age of 30? Uh, or 60. Yeah, right. At the uh, age of 60. The, right. So uh, at the, in the civil service, it's the same. You retire at the age mm. of 60. You can retire before as well, I think. If you have 25 years of service, you can retire with benefits. 
So, okay. Yeah. So okay. in order to mm. you know get those benefits, I think you need to have 25 years of service. Otherwise, you just retire at 60. Okay. In the grade you're in, and then mm. depending in the grade uh, uh, you retire, you get those benefits. There's different for 20, 21, 22, and uh, so normally people, I think, get into the civil service between 25 and 32. And from then to 60, they serve. And I think, I, I do think most people would make it to uh, 21 okay. or 20 at least. Mm. And then they retire. Uh, so it gets better with time. And then the retirement package is, I think, very nice, which is why people don't quit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. 21 is the highest grade, right? 22, from 22, 22 is the highest 22 grade. 22 is the yes. highest grade. Okay. Okay. So, how do you see Pakistan round about the time of your retirement? I don't know if I live that far. Uh, okay, I how many years would it take? For me to retire? Yeah. Try up from now, it would be 33 years. 33 years. Yeah. 30, okay. So, I think, I don't know. That's a long time. Yeah. I, th I think uh, one can hope that the country will be better than what it is now. Mm -hmm. uh, because of whatever happened, you know, the country is really struggling. Uh, and then w one can hope that we, you know, really push up our exports and develop local industries to have, you know, a good economy. Mm -hmm. uh, the strong, you know, backbone of any nation is its economy yes absolutely. i would you know even though the future looks a uh, little bleak at the moment it mm -hmm. does for the whole world because you know it's not just pakistan the whole world is suffering from yes. all this inflation and then uh, the covid thing the russia ukraine war everything so mm -hmm. i think the whole uh, world is suffering but hopefully you know with a bit of stability the country needs stability it needs political stability. So with a bit of stability in the upcoming years, I think uh, the country can progress. And by the time I'm retiring, I think it will be a good superpower in, I think, at least South Asia. Inshallah. <laughs> All right. So any advice for the people, uh, for the CSS aspirants especially, who are going to appear in the CSS exam? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Honestly, there's a lot of, I think, luck involved in CSS as well. I th I'd say probably 30 to 20 percent. Some people, kuch log ek topic prepare karte hain, wo aa jata hai. Kuch log dusra karte hain, wo nahi aata. Mm -hmm. Kuch log, you know, some people have a background in accounting. Some people have a background in biology. You know, it depends on the papers and then your preparation as well. I'd say go for, you know... Uh, Right now, people have a lot of facilities that yeah. we did not. Mm -hmm. For example, everything is available. Like huh. everything is just a click away. Everything is yeah. available a click away. Chat GPT is available, right? Yes, it's a Chat big, GPT is a game changer. Huh, I it's would it's say. a big resource. Yeah. Uh, I wish I had that. Hmm. And then you know, I think teachers are so good. There are so hmm. many books now. Uh, it's uh, only been I think three years since I gave the exam, but there has been a lot of change. I'd say just focus on your English a lot uh, because th the rest of the subjects, you know, the first mm -hmm. big problem is passing the exam, yeah. right? And then we can think about what you want to do in the interview. Mm -hmm. So focus on your English. I think the biggest hurdle has been always will be the English essay. And then once, you know, you have a good hold of that, try to include a lot of, you know... Um, graphical things in your answers okay so if i want to give a stat or a fact i'd like to visualize it i'd like to draw graphs uh, flow charts you know i'd like to do comparison tables big quotations you know make it look nice yeah. uh, make it look effective right so no one no one has the time to check your whole paper okay because one examiner has a lot of burden on them which keeps increasing each year. But if I'm an examiner and then I'm checking your paper, flipping through the pages, I'll see that you have visualized stuff for me. Mm -hmm. And that's going to, you know, convince me to give you more marks. Like it's the presentation that matters. The presentation. Huh, yeah, the presenta paper. besides the presentation, the visualization. 
everyone should focus on visualization it's like by that you mean you have to go for diagrams and flow yes, charts yes. and like yeah uh, be be a nerd okay basically right. okay i have heard that um, majority of the students they fail their english essay and prescient composition which are both english courses yeah so uh, what do you think why is that so why english islamiyat ka bhi like i have heard that islamiyat mein bhi fail hote hai but english essay and prescient composition usme takriban har saal bahut zyada bachche fail hote hain to islamiyat mein jo jo wo jo fail hota hai uska deen imaan kamzor hai i think i think english uh, is basically uh, fpsc needs something first of all they need something to fail so many students right aapke uh, paas hoti hai koi 200 seat aur udhar apply karta hai bachcha कोई 18 से बीस हज़ार जिसमें से उनने फिर 400 को पास करना होता है तो दे नीड समथिंग रियली डिफिकल्ट यू नो मेक यू नो स्टूडेंट्स फेल इन इट एंड दैट इज़ अनफॉर्चुनेटली द ऐसे थिंग आई आई डोंट थिंक अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल फेल इन प्रेसी बट इट मस्ट बी इन सेकंड नंबर आई थिंक द प्रॉब्लम विद इंग्लिश ऐसे इज दैट यू नो दे डोंट वॉन्ट you to have a good or perfect english or very fancy english they have a certain style which they've never declared by the way because if they do then everyone will keep passing the exam mm-hmm. agar aap english essay ka syllabus dekhe it's basically teen ya char line uh, and then they've said ke you know prepare an outline and okay. then these are the books and that's it so it's very open ended mm-hmm. and then there's a lot of biasness in, involved as well because आप एक एग्जामिनर हैं यू माइट लाइक समथिंग एंड अगर मैं एक एग्जामिनर हूँ आई माइट यू नो नॉट लाइक द सेम थिंग वट आई थिंक पीपल शुड फोकस ऑन इज हैविंग अ वेरी गुड स्ट्रक्चर इन देर ऐसे समथिंग लाइक अ लॉजिकल फ्लो थिंग्स शुड मेक सेंस फ्लो इन टू वन एन अदर एंड देन यू नो हैव अ पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू दैम सेल्व विच इज रिफ्लेक्टेड इन देर ऐसे तो इफ यू नो इफ देर इज अ टॉपिक की क्लाइमेट चेंज Uh, causes and consequences the, you you should be reflecting your own thoughts in a way in that essay that how we you know it's affecting the world how we can overcome it and uh, as far as pressy and composition goes i think um the best thing for uh, people a lot of people mm-hmm. struggle with the pressy i think the best thing i've learned is a very simple formula ke you you write the pressy three times okay. try to shorten the pressy once and then shorten it again and again and the third time you will get a very good version which will have you know deleted all of the useless things and then the title is usually given in the first two lines or the last two lines okay. um i don't think the english pressy is very hard to be honest uh, there are, you, you know you should practice your vocabulary the gre books are very hol- helpful for all this all right all right and um at the end of the day like i said it's a bit of luck as well but what i would suggest to people is that always pick topics you know you know their that their meaning is clear to you right so if there is a topic that you don't even know what it means and you start writing in the hope that it will be right i think you have already failed in yeah. that pick a topic that is clear to you mm-hmm. so that you can write uh, you know uh, very clearly and very concisely All right. So since we have started talking about the subjects, so I would like to come to current and past affairs as well. So like how should one stay updated with current affairs? It's the easiest thing in the world to stay updated with current affairs. Mm-hmm. I think uh, just reading the newspaper and then reading uh, you know magazines. By okay. magazines I mean, you know, the Economist and then Ipri and then you know the world affairs magazine uh, these magazines will really help you uh, stay updated but also develop an opinion so you know s- people starting out current affairs for the first time they have a problem is that they start reading mm-hmm. if i pick up the newspaper now and i see that what's happening in gaza right mm-hmm. i don't know why it's happening because i don't know the background so you yeah. need to first of all see what's happening in the world and then see why it's happening why right it's go happening, to the root yeah. cause mm-hmm. and then uh, slowly uh, i think english and current affairs is something you do on a daily basis until your papers because every day there are new stats facts i used to keep cutouts of mm-hmm. newspapers 
uh, screenshots of newspapers with me so that I can use them on the exam day. And um, I think, uh, you know, current affairs is not that difficult. Just having a good critical analysis of events, which again, different these editorials will give mm. you, will help you score a good, you know, number in the paper. And as far as park affairs is concerned, I think, again, uh, the syllabus cannot change the history of the uh, part, you know. So uh, read the history part uh, thoroughly. Okay. There's a one question from history from one of the personalities always. Uh, I'd say use ChatGPT to even streamline things for you. Okay. And then when it comes to there is a portion of Pakistan affairs that is kind of current affairs. Mm -hmm. So that will be prepared with current affairs as well. Pakistan's relationship with China or USA, mm -hmm. right? And that's going to get prepared uh, from the current affairs part. What I think people fail to realize is that you have to attempt each subject from a different point of view. So a current affairs question would be a general or a neutral point of view or, you know, from the world point of view, they could be talking about US-China and then you would be okay. presenting both sides of the coin. And in Pakistan affairs, you know, your point of view has to be narrowly focused from Pakistan's point of view, from Pakistan's national interest. Mm. And that is the difference between these two subjects. If I'm giving a critical analysis in Pakistan affairs, it would be centered around Pakistan and its implications for Pakistan and blah, blah, blah. All right. Yes, as you have said that current affairs is something that you have to prepare on daily basis. And I've heard, I might be wrong, but I've heard that this is